Welcome to Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your speed shift basketball system with a 50 inch polycarbonate backboard. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with your basketball system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at some of the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two half inch wrenches, two 7 16 wrenches, two 9 16 wrenches, two 3 4 wrenches, and one 3 8 wrench, two 3 16 Allen keys which are included, a pair of pliers, a rubber mallet, a Phillips head screwdriver, a block of wood. To make this easier, we're going to use a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over tighten or over torque the hardware. A Phillips bit, a socket adapter, half inch socket, 7 16 socket, 9 16 socket, 3 4 socket, and a 3 8 socket. There are some steps within this assembly that require more than one person, so make sure you have at least one other adult available. It's crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to avoid property damage or serious injury. All right, let's get started. Slide the top pole onto the middle pole, making sure the hole at the bottom of the top pole lines up with the slot on the middle pole. The middle pole is the one with the warning sticker. Secure the top pole to the middle pole with the hardware. The screw should be flush with the pole. It's normal if it spins freely. Secure the bottom pole to the middle pole using the same method as before. Now secure the pole bracket to the middle pole, taking the bolts and sliding them through the small holes on the back and making sure that the arrow on the pole bracket is facing towards the top. Before moving on to the next step, make sure you've done the previous steps properly because the next step is irreversible. We're going to strike each end of the pole assembly five or six times on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard. It's critical that you complete this step, otherwise you can expect problems in the future. You're going to need to use some force, so be sure not to hit your toes. Now attach the flat end of the pole brace to the base, making sure the angled end is facing out. Just finger tighten the hardware for now. Add a wheel to the long axle, slide it through the hole at the bottom of the pole, add your other wheel, then add a spacer to each end of the axle. Finally take your smaller axle and slide it through the second set of holes. Now take the base and lower it onto the long axle. The long axle should fit within these notches on the base. 
Step on the base until you hear the click of the long axle snapping into place. Now you're going to lift the pole assembly up so that the small axle fits into these notches. Secure the pole braces to the pole with the hardware. Tip the system down so the pole is laying flat on the ground and don't tip the system back up until the base has been properly filled. Now go ahead and tighten all the remaining hardware. Slide the U-bolt into the hole just below the number one on the backboard brackets so that it rests into the notches. Now take your spring and slide your spacer into the hook and line your spacer up with the hole above number one in between the brackets and secure with the hardware. Now take the other spacer and line it up with the hole just below the larger hole closer to the top. Now take your rim support channel and place it into the notch on the back of the backboard. Now take the backboard bracket assembly and slide the U-bolts into the oblong holes above the channel. On the lower set of holes, add a bolt with a washer and a bushing and secure with a T-nut. Before completely tightening this, make sure that the bolt is on the outside of the hole. Be careful not to over tighten. You'll know it's too tight if the rubber bushings are bulging. Slide the rim onto the backboard and secure with the hardware. Make sure the jam nuts go all the way down the threads. Now slide the compression springs onto the U-bolt. Add your retainer plate, then secure with the nuts don't over tighten these because these are only to adjust the tension of the rim. Now bend the backboard bracket over until the hole at the top lines up with the hole on the backboard. Now tighten the hardware from earlier.
Take the upper extension arm and attach it to the backboard on the side where the holes are further apart. If you find this step difficult, you may need to take the bolt and remount the excess powder coating. Only tighten the hardware until the nut is flush with the bolt. Attach the lower extension arms to the backboard using the same method as the upper extension arms. Lay the backboard on a soft surface to prevent scratching the rim, then have someone hold the pole assembly so you can attach the upper and lower extension arms. going up. Only tighten the hardware so that the bolt is flush with the nut. Now attach the lock tab to the trigger with the hardware, making sure the long end is sticking over the trigger. Make sure the inner channel has been removed from the outer tube. Now attach the side of the handle that doesn't have an arrow to the outer tube. Slide the trigger spring onto the trigger and into the handle. Take the other handle and place it onto the outer tube and then secure the two handles together. Secure the hex bolt and cap nut to the outer tube through this hole. Do not over tighten. Now take the inner channel and slide it into the outer tube holding the trigger until it clicks into the first notch. Now attach the inner channel to the pull bracket with the hardware. Now attach the outer tube to the lower extension arms with the hardware.
Insert the bolt into the upper hole on the upper extension arm and secure with the hardware. Raise the backboard to its highest position. Using the closed end of a wrench, take the counterbalance spring and pull onto the bolt we just inserted. Now go ahead and attach the net to the rim while it's on the ground. Now lay the system on its side so you can peel the protective film off the backboard. For these next steps, follow the link in the description below to see how to properly fill the base of your system. We've already filled the base of this system, so let's move on to the next step. Now raise your hoop to the highest height setting. Now place the sticker on the pole so that the arrow on the handle lines up with the 10 foot mark on the sticker. Thank you for watching our video of how to assemble your lifetime speed shift basketball system. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.